The Bridge Inn used to stand on the sales side of the River Mersey on Cross Street, as seen here in 1907. The bridge was a grand looking Chester's house, but was unfortunately prone to flooding, the landlord often being banished to the upper floors of the pub when the River Mersey broke its banks. The bridge was knocked down in the late 1980s and was briefly replaced by the Green Hall's Crossford pub. This did not last long and then was taken over by TGI Fridays in 1997, where it stands to this day. The Vine, a 19th century pub, altered in the early 20th century and again in the 1990s. It's located on Washeray Road, which is the A56 between Sale Centre and Marsden Road. Although at the time of recording, its future is unclear, but I hope it remains part of Sale's history. This is the wagon and horses over a century ago in its Victorian splendour, where horse and cart were the main forms of transport. The wagon and horses were situated on Cross Street in Sale. A Wilson's house in the 1970s, it became a free house in the 1980s. The pub was closed in early 2003 and quickly fell into disrepair. This is one of my favourite pubs in Sale and I bought my first pint here and enjoyed the disco nights. It's now a co-op and apartments and now just a memory. The bus stop reminds me of where the front entrance of the pub used to be. The Queen's was a big Tetley house at the top of Hope Road and on the corner with Northern Road in Sale. It was right next to Sale Railway Station. It was later rebranded into the Met Bar until its demise in 2007 after falling into disrepair. It used to be packed due to its location. As we look down Northenden Road, panning right down Hope Road, you can see the building in front of us now, which is apartments, and this is where the Met Bar and the Queen's once stood. This is 153 Manchester Road in Broadheath, affectionately known as the Railway Pub. This Grade 2 listed Victorian pub, once in a row of cottages along the main road from Manchester to Altrincham. The cottages have long been demolished to make way for Atlantic Road Retail Park, but the pub's listed status prevents its demolition and leaves it standing on its own at the edge of the retail complex car park. To the rear of the property is the beer garden.
The elevations are a brick construction set beneath a pitch slate covered roof. Back in its heyday, it was surrounded by factories and industries and a railway line. Looking along Gordon's Richards Way, you can see the sprawling retail park on both sides of the road. The wheat sheaf in Altrincham. This is a distinctive black and white timber building on the main Manchester road heading into Altrincham. This has been vacant for a good number of years now. Areas of the outside of this former coaching inn are over 400 years old, although it's been altered many times inside. The current owner was on site and allowed me brief access to film around the building. Under new management, as of late 2013, both downstairs and the upstairs function rooms were fully redecorated to give the building a more contemporary and welcoming feel, but unfortunately has fallen into disrepair and is now due for alteration. As you look round the rear of the courtyard, you can see where the stables may have been at the rear of the building. The building, which is considered a heritage asset, will not be completely demolished as part of the new proposal plans, but I hope they keep its main characteristics. The Bay Moulton. This is a local pub residing on the edge of Oldfield Brow and near the Trans Pennine Trail. It was popular for its family orientated large beer garden. Pleasure boats used to regularly moor up due to the proximity of the Bridgewater Canal and took advantage of the facilities available. It also boasts its own angling club. An extract taken from the Messenger newspaper. 16 people have written to Trafford Council and objected to the redevelopment of the Bay Moulton in Siemens Road. They argued the pub had been the main source of gatherings and entertainment for those living in the area. It was a place where people met and socialised, wrote one objector. So many pubs have been demolished and converted into homes. However, the authority received seven letters from residents back in the scheme. The building has not been used for a pub for a number of years and despite permission being granted for its renovation, it sadly doesn't seem to ever to be returned to a pub. The proposal is to transform the former pub into a substantial family home. There are already contractors on site and work has already started to commence on the redevelopment of this former pub. And finally, the Pelican Pub Hotel and former Altrincham Lodge Hotel, 350 Manchester Road, West Timperley. I deliberately saved this one to last due to the numerous old photographs of the site. Looking at Manchester Road in this photograph, you can see how quiet it is. Poignant to see what it looks like today.
The owners Green King have said that this pub on Manchester Road has been closed for good and was also for sale earlier in 2020. The site currently comprises of the Pelican Public House which fronts Manchester Road and to the rear of the former Altrincham Lodge Motel. The Pelican Pub is a three-storey building and a traditional brick construction with multi-pitched tile roof. The motel comprises of a two-storey detached building built in a U-shape of brick and timber construction with flat metal clad roof. It's been designed offering 48 ensuite rooms with reception area and manager's office. The site currently boasts two magnificent sized car parks adjoining the north side elevation of the pub and the other to the rear surrounding the motel. The story of Timperley Tom. There was a highwayman called Timperley Tom, his real name being Thomas Brennan, who used to ride what is now called Manchester Road, the A56. Brennan was known to frequent the Pelican pub. Highwaymen stole from travellers and threatened them with a gun until they gave their valuables. Thomas Brennan was later hanged for murder of Mr Jacob Pot of Hale in 1790. Timperley Tom's ghost is said to haunt the Pelican pub. There are other pubs in the area which have succumbed to a similar fate and I may cover them in a future video. I'd like to thank Carol Underwood for her archive pictures. Thanks for watching.